Dr. Jones, having been elected by your peers to serve as president of the academy, do you affirm that you will faithfully execute all the duties and responsibilities to the best of your ability? I will, sir. Having affirmed for the members of the academy your acceptance of your responsibilities, it is my privilege to present you this presidential gavel and to install you as president of the Richmond Academy for the years 2022 and 2023. May your tenure prove to benefit our members, the community, and the patients we serve. Thank you. Thank you guys, and thank you Carolyn. At this point I'd like to invite up the 2022 Board of Trustees who will serve with me um, for installation. We'll ask everybody to line up over here, how about that? Uh, Dr. Tovia Smith, Vice President. Dr. Ike Ebay, Secretary. Dr. Jake O'Shea, Treasurer. Dr. Deborah Barron couldn't be with us tonight. Dr. Alice Combs. Dr. Lydia Johnson, Jones Johnson. Dr. Quinn Lipman. Dr. Mike Menon. Dr. Joynita Nicholson. Dr. Jonathan Schaff. Dr. Maggie Sigmund, Dr. Morgan Swanstrom, Dr. Mark Townsend, Ms. Rachel Downey, and Ms. Asha Krishna Kumar. And Ben Bain. Who's, who couldn't be with us tonight. Oh, there he is, sorry. <laughs> they gotta keep me straight. Having been elected by your peers to serve as trustees of the academy, do you affirm that you will faithfully execute all duties and responsibilities to the best of your ability? Thank you. <laughs> Having affirmed for the members of the Academy your acceptance of your responsibilities, it's my privilege to install you as officers and trustees of the Richmond Academy of Medicine. May your tenure prove to benefit our members, the community, and the patients we serve. Congratulations and best wishes. Good evening and welcome. The past couple years haven't been quite what we imagined, have they? Our last in-person RAM meeting was two years ago on January 21st, 2020. And at that time, we inaugurated Carolyn Burns as our president. We had big plans to celebrate Ram's 200th anniversary in 2020. We'd had some wins in the General Assembly, and then it seems time stopped. For many of us, these have been the roughest two years of our careers. We've been through so much in the past two years, but we've survived, and I'm hopeful that it's made us stronger. Despite everything, the Academy has remained relevant, and our members stayed strong. Here we are now, in person again, and I'm so delighted that we could all be together tonight. Growing up on a farm in Brunswick County, Virginia, I never thought I'd be involved in medicine, let alone president of RAM. When I entered Davidson College, I thought I'd go into law. My late grandfather had a different idea. With plenty of lawyers in my family, he thought I needed to go to med school. And fortunately, during freshman year, I found out that my interests were in science and not law. Later at MCV, I found the challenges of adult medicine piqued my interest 
and provided a platform for a great deal of variety and opportunities. After internal medicine residency at the University of Alabama, I returned to Richmond to settle and become a part of the medical community here. And I've been a member of private practice groups as well as corporate medical ones. And currently, I'm employed by Bon Secours Mercy Health as an internist at West End Internal Medicine. I have to thank my family for their love and support. We've navigated the years of change in our careers in the medical community. They've been there for me in the highs and the lows of our work and family life. My children, Rivers and Laura, have supported my work by being patient and understanding when I had to miss a soccer match, or I had to miss a school play practice to take care of patients, or get interrupted at the mall when I had to give advice to somebody I might know. <laughs> I'm proud of the work they're doing now. Rivers is working to retool primary care practices in our VA hospitals across the country, and Laura has been working in quality of care and efficiency work at Emory University. Thanks to them for their support and the work they're doing. They could not be here tonight as they had planned for multiple times to make the trip and then work out in the way. Thank you to Susan Prossy Waltrip for escorting me tonight. She and I have worked together for many years. She's our practice manager. Our group would not be able to do the good things that we do without her leadership and calm hand at the helm. We've been repeatedly asked to pioneer projects for Bon Secours, and it is her skill that allows us to get them done and provide the education and mentorship to our other groups. It's a testament to the role a practice manager with excellence, making us all look good as we do the work of caring for patients. Additionally, thank you to Dr. Carolyn Burns for her leadership of the Academy for the last two years. Her dedication has been an inspiration to me and I hope I can live up to the leadership standards and the guidance that she's provided. Thank you also to all those past presidents for their prior work and their ongoing commitment to the work that we do. Finally, a very special thank you to the staff at the Academy, led by Jim Beckner, who make everything happen. I've been involved with the Academy for more than 20 years, serving on the board as well as secretary and vice president and serving as a delegate to the MSV for many years. RAM membership has fostered my connections to the community across multiple healthcare systems. These connections have enhanced my ability to care for my patients with a rich referral network. The pandemic radically changed the way we practice medicine. As it unfolded, we quickly adjusted to provide virtual care. But at first, the care we provided was impacted by limited resources in ways I have never experienced in my 30-year career. There was a lack of PPE and fast and accurate testing and limited availability of vaccines were a few of the challenges that the pandemic dropped on us. Richmond's medical community rallied to provide physical support, sharing PPE, and other resources for practices in need. Countless RAM members came out of the Mecca of retirement to provide staffing support, volunteering with the Virginia Medical Reserve Corps and area free clinics. Many provided emotional support as reassuring voices of wisdom during these difficult and confusing times. Thank you. It's been a crazy two years. Most of us didn't have time to step back and take a breath and process everything. If you did, I commend you, but for so many, this is gonna catch up with us. The practice of medicine has been subjected to so many external forces trying to stamp out our spirit. There's government regulation, patients who believe Dr. Google over us, electronic health records, just to mention a few. I often think of Dr. Burns' inaugural address that we are the highest paid data entry workers on the globe. <laughs> And that was before 2020. Now we have to deal with the global pandemic, with politicians who put party politics over public health needs, and anti-vaxxers, and those who've ignored the more than 950,000 deaths in our country alone. And on top of that, a good swath of the population is denying we know how to do our jobs. COVID-19 not only devastated the lives of our patients, it's jeopardized our safety. It's undermined our livelihoods and our confidence. 
Some of our colleagues and friends have died. Every day, we had to balance service to our patients with the fear of contracting the virus and spreading it to coworkers, family, and friends. COVID exacerbated the underlying systemic problems that have, that have contributed to physician burnout. The Physician Wellness Survey from Medscape in 2021 surveyed 12,000 US doctors and reported that 42% considered themselves to be burned out. Most likely to be affected that year were critical care doctors at 51%. Those are old numbers and I'm sure they're not any better now. Some other shocking statistics. 79% of respondents said that this started before the pandemic and most attributed this to too many bureaucratic tasks. 36% of providers would categorize them as exasperated by their patients. Two thirds of physicians considered their burnout more intense after the pandemic. And more than 20% of physicians had considered suicide and 1% had attempted. What can we do? Exercise and hobbies help 65% of physicians cope with these feelings, but the majority of respondents to the survey would not communicate their feelings to others or seek help from resources from their community or employer. That needs to change. Here's what I've been doing. In our practice, I have tried to engage with our partners to provide moral support and improvement in the work environment and the relationships with our patients. Our system has put in place a provider wellness program that has included small groups, mentor and coaching programs, as well as the ability to use allocated CME funds for counseling with dedicated professionals for wellness. As a leader of one of those groups, I found it to be a safe environment to discuss feelings and frustrations and obtain and provide support. One physician cannot change the system alone that's why we need our medical societies like RAM. Well before the pandemic, RAM was at the forefront of recognizing and addressing physician burnout. We were the first medical society to invite Drs. Wendy Dean and Dr. Simon Talbot to speak about what they call moral injury, a term that I believe accurately describes what many are feeling. But it didn't end with Dr. Deans and Talbots collecting the RAM souvenir coffee mugs and going home. Instead, they recognized in our academy a unique group of physicians intent on meeting challenges head on and making real changes in medicine. They invited RAM to align on their initiative, which includes ideas to take back the disempowerment of physicians, and we will. During the pandemic, the academy has been actively addressing the needs of its membership, including moving all program to the virtual realm during 2020 and 2021. And RAM created a series of webinars with national and local experts addressing both COVID and non-COVID related topics. We scheduled regular roundtables for practice administrators to share feelings and best practices. They shifted through the confusing, reg sifted through the confusing regulations of the CARES Act rules, the PPE loans, and so on to help practices find the resources to keep the lights on. They created a COVID-19 resource center, the first in the region, that included sections for physicians, practice administrators, volunteers, and the latest news updates. Loving Lunches RVA delivered 16,500 meals to 27 facilities in 2020 pumping more than $100,000 into the local restaurant and food service economy. And this past year, the program won MSV's Salute to Service Award. CCBS pulled together to get physicians credentialed as quickly as possible so they could manage the surge of patients. And Access Now stayed open and communicated with patients and physicians to ensure that no one went without needed care. We continue to serve more than 2,000 patients a year through that program. Honoring Choices Virginia's mission to provide advanced care planning continued to be important as people considered mortality and quality of life. RAM focused on advocacy, fighting against insurance companies who tried to deny reimbursement for telehealth, and RAM raised the issue of malpractice concerns early on and supported the resulting executive order that protected physicians. For 202 years, RAM has been the patient's advocate, physician's ally, and community's partner. 
This group of doctors has triumphed over epidemics, health crises, major wars, and power plays between doctors and health systems, misinformation, and change. We have overcome so much, and we have more to do. For the next two years, I hope to continue to advance the good work of the Academy. Our focus will continue to allow the efficient practice of medicine and improved quality of life. Physicians must be unified, and RAM pulls us together to accomplish those goals. We're going to start by supporting organized medicine. We'll have to ensure we have a voice at the table. Our work at the legislature has to continue so that we're able to provide care to all without discrimination. As per our resolutions in this year's MSV House of Delegates, we must support care for the underserved without regard to race, religion, age, social status, income, sexual orientation, or gender identity. Physician frustrations are a systemic problem and should be addressed as such. We should work to provide additional resources and opportunities to promote increased reimbursement, which has been shown to increase job satisfaction. We should support the ability of physicians to provide self-care, whether physically or emotionally, and move to assure that we all have passion for our work and engage with our patients. We should encourage the members and provide resources to promote physician well-being. Yes, we're going to address the issues that are burning us out, and I'm going to challenge each of you to take control of your own wellness and that of your peers. What is it that you do to relieve stress? I know we have members who are renowned photographers, accomplished athletes, skilled painters, and gifted writers. How can we share this with others? We'll create a physician-led program. Maybe you can start a physician's running or tennis group. Perhaps you can give a talk on your favorite hobby. I'm willing to lead other physicians who want to take up hiking or organized walks. To help us get started, I'm excited to announce a new opportunity to improve your health and wellness this year, the RAM Wellness Challenge of 2022. The goal of the Wellness Challenge is to improve your individual health over a two-week period through teamwork by completing individual challenges in specific categories exercise, mind, and diet. You'll earn individual points for completed challenges. Individual points will be added towards your team's total score and prizes will be awarded for the teams with the highest points. We're kicking off the wellness challenge with a social at ACAC Short Pump rooftop on April 12th at 5.30. I hope you can join us for the social and or the wellness challenge of 2022. We can do this. We're gonna rebuild the trust in medicine, continue to show compassion for all of our patients, and stand up to the external forces trying to tell us how to practice medicine. While caring for our profession, we're going to take time to care for our, ourselves and those we love. We need your input, your ideas, and your enthusiasm. We will do this. Thank you. Now for the, our first item of business as president, um, service on the board of the academy requires time and sacrifice. I'd like to recognize trustees who left our board at the end of 2021. As I call your name, please come forward to receive your thanks and a small token of our appreciation for your service. Uh, let's see, practice manager trustee Ronnie Milligan, I don't think is here. The student trustee, Matthew Alexander. Trustee, Dr. Ranjah Gill. You come forward. Past President Dr. Mark Monahan, who was just here. Thank you for coming, Mark. Good Last minute. 
Yeah, good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'd also like to recognize Dr. Carolyn Burns, our fearless leader during what would likely be considered one of the most challenging presidential terms. Thank you, Carolyn. So next, in addition to the Wellness Challenge kickoff, I just wanted to mention a few other things that are coming up. Um, next week, RAM, at RAM or via Zoom, on Tuesday, March 29th, there'll be a legislative wrap-up with James Pickerel. On April 19th, at the Hilton Richmond Hotel and Spa Short Pump, there will be nationally recognized speaker, Dr. Kraft, who will discuss the future of health and medicine. Don't miss it. And on May 10th, we'll host our next lunch on Tuesday at the Westwood Club. Dr. Katherine Jacobson will be discussing vaccine hesitancy and the future of public health. That same evening, we'll be hosting a fireside chat via Zoom webinar with Corey Feist, who is former CEO of UVA Physicians Group and now founder of the Lorna Breen Heroes Foundation, who will discuss the All In for Health organization and how they are prioritizing the well being of healthcare workers. On May 25th, the Women in Focus section will host a dinner to celebrate their 25th anniversary. The dinner will be held at the Lewis Ganner Robbins Tea House at 5 30 p.m. And the speaker will be Brad Deflin and will discuss cybersecurity for you and your practice. The event will be limited to 50 people, so once registration opens, reserve early. Please make plans to be with us for these upcoming events. Now changing gears a little bit. We learned last week that RAM member Dr. Charles Williams turned 106. 106 years old. Can you imagine all the ways medicine has changed since he was practicing? So for my first request as president, I'd like us all to wish him a quick happy birthday. And Lara is going to video us singing happy birthday to him. And we'll send the video to his son, Dr. Marvin Williams, who's also a RAM member. And I am a terrible singer, so somebody else can help lead the singing. So one, two, three. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday Dr. Williams, happy birthday to you. Thank you everyone. And for my last announcement of this evening, if you're a former RAM president or a trustee, we want you to please stand and follow Lara to the West Hampton Room now, where we're gonna take a quick photo for this year's prestigious group. Thank you all, the meeting's adjourned.